Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. As you can see, I'm back at my workshop and I've got a new and different type of review for you. Right here in this box I have an electric melting furnace. What I plan to do today is unbox this furnace, see what comes with it, fire it up, and uh, melt some things. So if you're interested in seeing what this has to offer, stick around. This particular model of furnace is made by a company called Anvil, and they claim a maximum temperature of 1150 C, and that draws 1600 watts of power. Along with the furnace comes a variety of accessories, and so how about we jump right into the unboxing? I opened up the shipping box to find an identical box inside. This double boxing provides some extra protection during shipping. Inside I found some leather gloves, some instructions, crucible tongs, not one, but two 3 kilogram graphite crucibles, power cord, and a graphite ingot mold. The unit itself appears to be built really well and mostly made out of steel. The only plastic parts seem to be the handles and the knob for opening the lid. The 3 kilogram crucible fits snugly into the opening of the furnace. The power cord plugs into the back of the unit. As you can see by the sticker on the outside, this is a 110 volt furnace and 220 volt furnaces are available in countries that use 220 as their main power source. Here is a shot of all the accessories that come with the furnace. Everything you need to get started comes in this package, minus the metal of course. I didn't know what to expect with the gloves, but I'm happy to say that they fit my hands well. I have average size hands, so these gloves should fit most adults. Now is time to prep the metal for melting. I need to get my portable bandsaw set up for cutting some raw materials. I have these old cast bronze burners left over from a gas grill that I threw away a long time ago. I was saving them for exactly this type of opportunity. There are some drawbacks to melting this type of metal. First, I'm not sure exactly what the alloy is, so I will be guessing on the melting temperature. Also, this bronze is old, dirty, and corroded. Those factors will likely lead to longer melt times and will contaminate my pour. I will probably need to remelt this bronze a couple of times to refine it before I could ever use it to cast. I figured now would be a good time to practice using the crucible tongs before everything got super hot. The power switch has a very positive click to it and the temperature controller is very easy and intuitive to use. The green numbers represent the desired temperature and the red numbers depict the actual temperature in the chamber. To set the temperature, simply press the set button to make the green numbers flash. Use the arrow buttons to increase or decrease the desired temperature, then press the set button again to confirm your selection. There's a tiny LED labeled OUT1 that lights up when the furnace is actively heating up. When the furnace is sitting at normal height, this light can be very hard to see. You have to bend down and get the controller at eye level to actually see if the chamber is heating. It took me a minute to figure it out, but once I did, it wasn't that big a deal. Side to side viewing angle is great. It would be nice to have the temperature controller tilt up slightly so the status lights can be seen while a person is standing. And that is my only gripe thus far. Time to load up some bronze. As expected, melting the bronze took some time. When the furnace is up to temperature, the metal grill around the unit does a good job at keeping you from bumping into the hot parts. I could put my hands on the grill and it was warm, but never hot to the touch. It's almost time to start pouring. Here's my pouring setup. A muffin pan on a 3 quarter inch steel plate with a fire extinguisher nearby. I will be wearing a leather apron and leather boots. What I don't have is a face shield, which is highly recommended when doing this type of work. Okay, time to pull the crucible out of the furnace. Let's see how well this non-stick coating holds up. With a successful pour under my belt, I went back and added more bronze for a second pour.
I wanted to see if the furnace could reach the advertised temperature of 1150, so I cranked it up to the max, and sure enough, it got right up to temperature and seemed to hold that temperature without any trouble. It was also at this time that I learned what happens to bronze when you get it too hot. So maybe you can hear the night sounds outside and that means that I spent most of the evening playing around with this foundry here and um, it works really well. I really have no complaints. Well actually I have the one complaint about the visibility of the status lights on the controller. But that's like the tiniest complaint and it is easy, easily remedied by bending over and taking a look at the status lights. As far as I can tell, the controller got the foundry up to temperature in a reasonable amount of time and then it held that temperature really, really well and it didn't deviate very much from the set temperature. I was able to melt brass and pour brass and I even burned some brass. So uh, that was interesting. Obviously I have no experience doing this and I'm learning as I go. But yes, you can burn brass. So that's something new that I learned today. I really hope you enjoy this content. Um, if you do, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Throw me a like. Comment down below. All of those things seem to tell YouTube that this video is worth watching and it helps their algorithm put my video in the video feeds of other viewers just like you. I really appreciate it. It doesn't cost anything for you to do that and it really helps me out. So if you are interested in buying one of your own electric foundries such as this one, I'll go ahead and leave a link down in the description below. You can click on that link and it'll take you to an Amazon page where you can buy it. Please know that if you do use my purchase link, I do receive a commission for that sale. Thanks a lot for sticking around to this point in the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day. I will see you guys next time. The correct melting temperatures are crucial.